Q-theory is a very complicated mathematical area, but the good news is there's a simplified Q-theory that you can use, which explains all sorts of everyday life situations. So let's suppose, for example, that you've got someone who can cope with 10 phone calls an hour and they've only got eight phone calls incoming per hour on average. You would think they'd be able to cope, wouldn't you? It sounds like there won't be a queue, but actually there will be a queue of four phone calls. And four phone calls is quite a bit because if you can do 10 per hour, that means it takes six minutes per phone call. And if you've got a queue of four phone calls, that means you're waiting for 24 minutes By the way, just to define a queue, that 24 minutes is actually a queue of three people waiting. So that's three times six, which is 18 minutes waiting, and then six minutes being served. 24 minutes overall. So why is there a queue if they've got the ability to cope with 10 people per hour and they've only got eight per hour arriving? And the answer is the randomness of the arrivals. They won't be equally spaced. So every now and then you'll have a bad patch and a queue will build up and then gradually you'll get on top of it, the queue will go back down. But overall it means on average you do have a queue length of four. Now there's a brilliant formula which tells you the length of the queue. It's based on the fact that your utilization, in my example, is 80% because you can cope with 10, you've only got 8 coming in, so you're 80% utilized. 20% of the time you're sitting around with nothing to do, 80% of the time you're working. And the formula says the Q length will be the utilization divided by 1 minus the utilization. So it will be 80 over 20, which is 4. Hopefully you're okay with the fact that 1 minus 80% is 20%. So 80 over 20 is a Q length of 4. Now, if you apply this formula to different utilizations, you'll see that a utilization of only 50% means that you'll have a Q length of only 1 because it's 50 over 50. And remember, that 1 is the person being served. So effectively, you're not waiting at all. So to not have to queue, you need to have a utilization of only 50%. You need to have basically double the number of people providing the service that you think you need. You'll need twice as many people on the reception desk or answering the phone. And that's why expensive hotels cost twice as much. You pay double in order to be served immediately. If your utilization goes up to 67%, the queue length is 2. As we've seen, once it reaches 80%, the utilization is 4. When you get to 90% utilization, which some people would think is quite an efficient organization, the queue length is going to be 90 over 10, which is 9 people waiting on average. When you get to 95, it becomes 95 over 5, which is 19 people in the queue. And perhaps bizarrely, when you reach 100% utilization, in other words, you've got exactly the right amount of resources to deal with the incoming work, the queue length is 100 over 0, which is infinite. So the queues will just get longer and longer. This is what happens at airports and casualty departments in hospitals and things like that. So customers want the queue to be only one or two, but they don't always want to pay for the utilization being 50% or 67% because there's an extra cost there. Bosses want utilization to be 90 or 95%, the most efficient use of resources, but they probably don't want their customers to be unhappy with queues of 10 to 20 people. So there's always this dilemma of should you have spare resources, and probably 80% is about the right mixture for most things. It depends what it is. When you've got very expensive doctors, maybe you should have a queue of people waiting for them. If you've got something quite cheap like petrol pumps, you might as well have some spare ones so that nobody has to queue, and you don't lose customers from them driving by your petrol station when they see the queue. So there's a balance to be struck. So, two reasons why this theory is really useful. One of them is that when you're resourcing a service, you need to always have an extra 20% at least of spare capacity. If you think you need 10 people to cope with demand, employ 12 or 14, because then you can make sure that you're giving a good, fast service and there aren't any queues. But the other reason why this uh, theory is really practical and important is that what if you're tempted to make some savings? What if you've got 10 people providing a service that you only really need eight people for, so you've got your queues down to four, and what if somebody leaves and you think, I'm not going to replace them, I'm going to save a bit of money, and I'm going to run it with only nine people instead of 10? Well, your utilization now, instead of eight over 10, is only eight over nine, so you're up to about 90% utilization. So what happens is the queues go from four to 10 because you've skimped on replacing that extra person. Similarly, if you had 
an inefficiency situation. And let's suppose um, one of your people isn't very well trained or the equipment's getting a bit worn out or you bring in an extra system where people have to fill in one more form and they become 10% less efficient. That means that instead of coping with 10 people an hour, they can only cope with nine and you've got eight arriving. Now you might think you're going to be okay, but of course, as we've seen, the queues are going to go from four to nine. So just because somebody is 10% slower, the queues will double. So this is why you mustn't uh, rearrange the uh, pub counter so it's less efficient with the till further away, or you mustn't bring in a new extra hygienic sliding glass door cupboard in your canteen, because if you do that, it's quite possible the extra 10% of work required will mean the queues double if you go from 80% to 90% utilisation. And of course, if you go from 90% to 100%, which is another 10% reduction in efficiency, queues will go from 19 to infinite, and you'll have a crisis on your hands. So you've always got to bear this in mind. If you're going to bring in a system that's a bit more difficult with extra paperwork, you need to recruit extra resources, or your queues will become massive. There we are. That's a little dip of the toe into the wonderful world of queue theory.